Hey guys, good morning. I was just going to share out a little bit of tech help that may help us get through the end of the year here. So uh, as we're approaching, we're looking for those opportunities to engage kids. But you know what? Some of the academic content is kind of winding down. You're looking for opportunities for kids to explore some different, um, just, just, some, just some extension of what it is that you're doing. And we've built a resource here at Grow Park Elementary called the Grow Park Genius Lab. So what this is, is a Google Classroom that all the kids in the entire school have uh, enrolled into. If they have not, the class code, like for those students that have recently transferred in, the class code is JMP26LH. Again, that is JMP26LH. And let me show you a little bit about that. So as we look over here, what we can see is this is the Grove Park Genius Lab. Now, I'll we'll put some announcements here in the front, like if we're doing some specific items with kids in the, in the, in the given week. And there are some links there that we can use to share. Uh, first off, I always keep the K2 Technology Sh Choice Board from the county, uh, the fourth quarter. This is a choice board uh, that the kids can use uh, to just some uh, county-approved links that have been uh, put together from the county, PBS Kids, um, and they're done by quarter, so the kids don't necessarily get satiated on it um, as an opportunity for them to to, to go hit at. Um, again, we've got one for K2. We've got a three through six. There's some math multiplication uh, practices here. Um, the, just some different links that I'll post and stream uh, in, in a given week just to share out with you, uh, with the kids, in case we in, in encounter them in our technology or, yeah, technology class. So uh, with the meat of what we're doing here is over in the classwork section. So if I look in the classwork section, we've organized it over into section uh, sections. Uh, there's a fact fluency section. And again, this is a great resource for our kiddos that are struggling with multiplication facts, division facts, addition facts, just that rote memorization. Some kids require more repetition than others. Some kids haven't put in the time to do repetition uh, to gain those pieces of knowledge. And we know just like any other language, if we don't speak that language fluently, then it's not going to translate fluently. It's kind of like using Google Translate when you go abroad. You can look up what those facts are. You can use strategies to find out what those facts are. But it is so much more meaningful from a synthesis and analysis basis uh, to practice what those are. Uh, math time tests are right there. I, I sometimes have the kids email the results to me, depending where they are. More often than not, I'll just have them show me my screen, put out a criterion. Hey guys, you got as much time as you want. Here's a multiplication chart. Let's go get those facts right and reinforce that. Uh, I digress. Uh, for kindergartners, what we have is we're, we're arranged in, in sections. Uh, the function with kindergarten right now is to kind of learn uh, how to use a mouse, uh, how to the, the, the fine motor dexterity necessary to kind of navigate, in addition to some coding exercises. So, for example, if we click on Mrs. Chadwick's class, uh, all the kids can come in and they know how to or they've experienced uh, clicking on their name. When you click on your name, you're given a a uh, symbol to sign in with rather than having to have a specific passcode. Uh, all the kindergarten teachers have this, but what is that symbol? Uh, I've got all of their passcodes kind of organized here in a folder that they can sign in with. Um, waiting. Sorry, internet's horrible sometimes. But anyway, so the password cards are right there once, once it pulls up. It's just a PDF with all their all their codes on. So let's say Johnny wants to do some coding practice. You want the kids to, to work on some coding. They're finished with their math. We're looking on extended activity. They can go to these pictures and you can see what their name is as well as what their past picture is. Um, so kindergarten has their own little section up there. Uh, the rest of it is divided into a number of different sections. For example, robotics and code. We all practiced in code.org this year. There's some different uh, spike sensor tutorials. Spike is the one of the main robots that we use here. Uh, Lego programming, uh, script code tester if anybody's in those advanced uh, script coding. Um, moving on down, one thing that we've been kind of focusing on with the kids as of late is 3D printing and design. And what you can do, there's two sites here. One is called Tinkercad. Now I want you to think about Tinkercad as being like um, if I told you to make a storybook character, and let's say I wanted you to make that storybook character out of clay, 
uh, you'd take the ball and you'd roll up a ball and then you'd roll up some, some little legs and maybe some arms and whatnot, and then, and then you'd put those together. Well, Tinkercad is kind of like a digital version of that. In, in Tinkercad, what students and you can do is you can go over, wait for it, Uh, ooh, I can't get there. Let me see if I can get there. I'm not in my, my account. Um, but there are some digital resources like the Learning Center. And you can create, here we are, some different designs that we could use. So this kind of teaches the kids how to bring those shapes, like a, like a clay shape, or in this case, a digital shape, those shapes in and how to manipulate those shapes into larger products that we could take over to a 3D printer and have them print up. Kids love this, but the, some of the underlying academics behind it is we can use this to teach measurement skills. Um, you have to know the inner, dia inner diameter, the outer diameter of some objects, measuring in millimeters, uh, fine measurement, um, just some, some synthesis of, of, of mathematics that we can use as an application. Shapes um, uh, as a reinforcement for what we're doing academically. There's a lot of things, like if you're, if you're on that tail end of the year and we know geometry kind of comes, comes towards the tail end because there's a lot of knowledge base, well, we can take that knowledge base and then we can apply it in something like Tinkercad. And the kids have been enrolled into Tinkercad and they have that opportunity to work. So. We've got a, a section for kindergartners, a section for robotics and code, a section for 3D printing and design. Drone in flight, so right now the state of Florida is going through a little bit of a comeuppance with the um, legislation that's come out as far as drone flight is concerned. Uh, what they've said is that if we don't have X, Y, or Z drones that are really expensive, that we're not allowed to fly them in, in class. However, uh, Part 107 of the FAA guidelines say that everybody that pilots a drone outside in the FAA spares. Now, what we fly inside and what we fly outside are two completely different things. But if we're going to fly a drone outside, students in uh, any, anywhere from <laughs> a, a preschooler all the way to an adult have to pass what's called a uh, 107 exam. Really easy exam to get through, but it does take about an hour. So if your kids, maybe they've transferred in and they're looking to do a little bit of drone flight over the summer, even though we can't necessarily teach them how to use the drone on campus right now, what we can do is make sure that they're prepared to go teach or to, to explore that opportunity on their, on their own as, as the situation occurs. There's some other t uh, STEAM activities, Chrome Music Lab, Tinkerball, Free Rice. Uh, Chrome Music Lab is a great resource for you to use to kids to explore music and how it can relate into a digital world. Tinkerball is a great source for looking at different uh, simple machines and how you can put them together to achieve an objective. Uh, free Rice is an awesome vocabulary exploration for every vocabulary question that they get right. A grain of rice is donated to a person that needs food. So if, if you think about the how that could all come together. We could we could make a real difference in this. Uh, contraption blo blocks, if you've got some extra contraption blocks, if you need contraption blocks, there's a building uh, a construction um, PDF there. If you need some, just come see me and I'll, uh, I can get you. Uh, chess, again, if you need a chess board to borrow. All, all good critical thinking exercises for you to do. There's those choice boards that are re uh, um, recommended earlier and some other activities that kids can uh, be engaged in towards the end of the year. So what the whole goal is for you to have a resource, the kids to have a resource to, okay, I'm done. I've got the knowledge. I've got the content. How can I engage in that knowledge? How can I engage in that content? This is a resource that we can be using as these end of the year activities to kind of bring the kids in and show that application of what it is they're doing. I hope that you find this helpful. If you did, please fill out the form that I sent with the link and uh, have a great day.